When it comes to providing a forecast, figuring out what is ahead, this is one of the most valuable and difficult things you can do in the field of data. And today what I want to do is walk you through three different ways that you can do this built into Excel. But you might be wondering, isn't this the job of a data scientist? Not anymore. There are so many tools out there and there are so many ways that you as a regular data analyst or analytics engineer, whatever job title you have now, that you can actually build these forecast models. So I want to take you through the simple to the advanced. But first, what we need is some data. So we're going to look at our data set here, which I created actually with ChatGPT. It's a sample data set of e-commerce data. So we have the data purchase, some demographic information, product information, and then a few measures such as session time and purchase amount, and then the user review rating. And then of course we have username. So here's a simple data set that I generated and we can look at this and use it to generate some forecasts. So the first and simplest way to do that is just to do a running average in Excel with built-in formulas. So first what I want to do is create a total of purchase amount by day using a pivot table. So first I need to actually parse out the date. And this is one of the things that isn't super fun about Excel. So date of purchase, we'll call this day of purchase. And we basically want to truncate this to the actual day, excluding the time. So there's probably a few different formulas. I'll just do one for date and I'll say year, get it from there, month, and day. All right, so now you can see that it's just zero, zero. And as I copy it down, it's all zero, zero for the time. I can go ahead and format this just so it's easier to read standard short date and there we go now let's create our pivot table insert pivot table new worksheet and i'm going to do day of purchase on rows and then purchase amount on values i'm going to uncheck months quarters and years because i want the actual date and you have essentially a summarized data set of your sales by day now I'm going to remove the total here because I don't think it's necessary. So I'll go under pivot table design and options, totals, show grand totals. I'm really just using this to sort of curate the data set. And then I have my data down there at the bottom. So a key thing here is having real data to go off. Obviously you need something, some historical data, and the more you have, the better. But I just want to see if using only 30 days of data, I can forecast out the next 30 days and see how accurate I can be. So with my data summarized here, what I wanna do is build out my 30 day moving average. So I'm gonna go down to January 31st here. I'm gonna type a new formula, average. And I'm going to do that for those guys. And then I'm actually gonna copy this down for 30 more days. So that should be right about here. All right, so as we have it here, this is my 30 day moving average. And you can see it moves as each different value goes, the cells that it references, good to go. Now I'm gonna put something over here that just says actual, and I'm gonna copy that up because I think that well, I wanna make sure that I know what I'm working with. Now that we have a 30 day moving average, we need to start building our forecast. So in order to do that, we're gonna simply keep this average going. But if these dates didn't exist from March 2nd and beyond, I wouldn't have anything to go off except the previous 30 days. So what I'm going to do is type average. And here I'm going to average the previous 30 days like this. And this I'll type forecast. So now I'll go ahead and take that one out 30 days. And there we have essentially our 30 days moving average actual and then forecast. So that in my experience is kind of the simplest, easiest way. And later we'll get to testing whether or not it's super accurate. But I know the finance guys out there right now are screaming at the screen saying we have tools for this. And yes, we do. So let's look at those now. So I'm gonna rename this sheet here as 30 day average. And I'm just going to duplicate this because I do like the summary of it. Move or copy, create a copy, move it to the end, 
good to go. And I'm gonna rename this one the built-in tools because we do have tools built into Excel to help us do this. So here in the built-in sheet, what I wanna do is take the actuals and I'm gonna remove the forecast. This isn't what we want. I wanna make sure we don't get those confused. So that way we can use this data here as our base. This is the base that we're gonna to use to actually create our new forecast using the built-in tools. So I'm gonna select the data that we wanna use there and then I'm gonna go up to data and forecast sheet and you can see what it did already. It already knows essentially based on the options and everything what we're looking at. So the values range is in column C. This is the actual average. The timeline range is in column A. It figured that out. We can fill in missing points. We don't have any missing points. And the way to aggregate the duplicates is going to use an average. We're gonna have confidence intervals and then we'll have the forecast start and end. It's only doing seven days right now. So let's take that out to the end of that month, which would be March 31st, 2023. So you can see exactly what it's doing with the chart right here. Seasonality, include forecast statistics, all those kind of things. I'll leave that off because we're gonna manually calculate it later, but I'll hit create. And it gives us this beautiful chart here. Let's drag this up and you can see very well what it's trying to do. And it's kind of amazing. So then if I scroll down, what I can see is that it actually gave me the forecast, the lower confidence band and the upper confidence band. Those are the things being graphed right there. I really, really like that tool. And then what we can do is actually take this and we'll copy it over and then compare it to our 30 day moving average. So that's looking good, I know, but there's one more way that I'm sure you've not used yet. And if you have, let me know in the comments because this is kind of amazing. And that is using the new built-in Python integration. So let's have a look. So I'm gonna go back to my 30-day average data set. I'm going to make a copy of this because I really like this one. It's becoming my fast favorite. I'm gonna rename this Python. And in order to use this, you also have to have the Python integration set up, which depending on when you're watching this is either just automatically built in or it's a part of the beta release for Microsoft 365. So you'll have to check all that. But once you get it running, you can do this really fancy fun stuff here with Python built in to Excel. All right, so I'm gonna close that guy there. I'm gonna come over here. And the first step to create a Python data set is to say equals PY and then open parentheses. And like I mentioned, if you don't have it set up yet, you'll have to try the preview. And then you'll skip tour, because I already know what I'm doing here. We'll try it again, equals PY, open paren. And now what we need to do is create what is known as a data frame. So we say DF equals, and then the weird Excel syntax is Excel. And I'm going to take this right here. Oops, I just want to choose the actual values. Yep, there we go. And now I have a data frame. So that data frame, if we wanna have a look and see what it looks like, if we click on this little guy, you can see it essentially is just that row of numbers there, just a, a list of numbers, easy enough. Now we wanna actually run a model to generate a forecast. So just below my data frame, I'm gonna say equals PY open paren. I'm going to expand out my formula bar, and then I'm going to paste in this code here, and then I'll walk you through it step by step. So this uses ARIMA, which is the Auto Regressive Integrated Moving Average Model, which is all set up for time series forecasting. So the code you see here, first we import the actual model from Stats Models, which is one of the built-in libraries in Python for Excel. Then we import ARIMA. This is the class that actually lets us run the models and create that. Then we create the model where we say model equals ARIMA DF, meaning we give it our data frame, and then we give it a couple parameters here. So the order is 510, five being the first parameter is the number of autoregressive terms. These are the lags of dependent variables indicating how many previous values are to be used to predict the current value. Now the second parameter one is the degree of differencing, the number of times the data have had past values subtracted. This is used to make the time series stationary and it's a requirement for ARIMA models. And then the third parameter is the zero here and this is the number of MA or moving average terms. These are lagged forecast errors used to predict the current value. 
Then we say model fit, and this line fits the ARIMA model to the historical data, finding the best values for the parameters given the data and the specified order. And then lastly, what we do is we generate the forecast by saying forecast and steps 30. It indicates the number of future steps to forecast, right? Because this could be days, it could be months, it could be years. Depending on what your data set, the model itself doesn't really know. That's why you have to tell it all of these different things. And you can play with this. You can change some of those parameters. If you look up this 510 is kind of the standard, but of course, depending on your situation, your scenario, you may get better or worse results using these versus other options. So play around with it, see what you want, but let's see what happens now when I actually run this code in Excel. So back here in Excel, just to run it, I'm going to hit control enter. You'll get a busy and then a series. And if I click on this little guy, you'll see that it gave me some numbers there, a little preview of it. That's fine. I also can have it kind of spit these out. I'm not going to do that. Instead, up here in the formula bar next to the PY, there's this little stack of papers. You can see that what it's outputting right now is a Python object. Instead, I can have it export the actual Excel value. So if I click on that, it's going to give me the actual values. These are the essentially the, the forecast of the results of my code with my model there. But I know what you're thinking. It's time to see which one is the most accurate. And as I mentioned before, we have a common way of doing this using the root mean squared error, the R. MSE. And it sounds fancy, but it's a pretty simple calculation to do in Excel. So let's jump into Excel now and see how to calculate that for the three different models that we created. Okay, so the way I want to do this is essentially to create one sheet that has all of these next to each other, and then I can just easily compare them. So first, I'm going to go up to my row labels, and I'm going to go down to purchase amount. I'm going to copy that, and I have the forecast already here. What I'm going to do is copy this all the way down to the end of this first forecast, which was from my 30 day one. And I will go to a new sheet and I'm going to do paste values. All right, but now the date value doesn't work. So I have to click on this, go to home and then format. I will do short date. There we go. And so you can see here the purchase amount. And then as I scroll down the actual, now if you recall, this is the 30 day average. So I'm gonna give that a title up here. 30 day average. But in order to actually calculate that compared to the other ones, I'm gonna delete all the actuals there. And then I'm gonna delete this label. So now we just have the forecast for the 30 day rolling average. Now I'm going to bring in the built in forecast. So to add in the built-in one, I need to head over to the built-in sheet and we have an actual number for the 1st of March. So I'm gonna copy everything below that, head back over to my sheet where I'm compiling everything and I will paste values it in there. So I just get the actual raw values. Everything lines up, good to go. And then lastly, I'm gonna create one on top for our Python example. And I'll jump back down to where that needs to begin. And I'll head over to Python, look for my Python results, copy those, head over here, paste values. and we have our three different data sets. So we have all the models compiled on one sheet, but how do we actually calculate which one is the most accurate? Let's do that now. So first thing I wanna do is rename this sheet to compiled, and then I'm going to create a new sheet called summary. And what I wanna do here is just have the actual amounts. So I'll have the actual, the forecast, and then I'll do the RMSE, then I'll do the average value, and then I'll do the variance. So this way we can actually see how they all stack up. So first we have our 30 day, then we have our built in, and then we have our Python model. So the actual is just gonna be a sum of the actual sales. So I'll head back over to my compiled one and I'm gonna look at the sales that we have forecasted here so we have this guy all the way down to there got it and so this number is gonna be the same for all of them because it's just gonna be used in the future calculations so this is the actual amount that we have now for the forecast I'm going to sum the actual 30-day forecast doing a sum here going back to my compiled list and we're gonna go up to the first one, which is the 30 day. We'll sum that. 
And then these guys should all just work well as I copy them over, just double checking. So column D, column E, yep, column B and column E. Just verify built in and Python. Yep, totally good. Okay, cool. So now we have our, the actual amount, the forecasted amount. Now we need the RMSE. But in order to calculate the RMSE, we have to do an array formula. I have essentially the sample of it here, and I'm not going to get into the math of how this works. All we need to do is replace the actual and the forecast with the actual ranges of the data. We don't want to just punch in the sum or the average or the totals. We don't want the aggregation. We want the individuals, and then we'll use the array formula ability for Excel to calculate it row by row and then give me the overall results. So for actual, I'm going to delete actual, and I'm going to go over to my compiled list scroll down i'm going to click on the first result and then hold shift and click on the bottom one so notice it gave me a range and then on forecast we're doing the 30-day average forecast so that's going to be the first one here i'm going to do the exact same thing where i hold shift and down now if i were just to hit enter this would give me an error so i have to hold control and shift and enter and it gives me an array formula which includes these little curly braces here that you can see Okay, so essentially I could just copy this over, but I need to make sure that for the actuals, it's always the correct column. So if I copied it over, the column references would change. So instead I'm gonna go here and I'm going to put some dollar signs here and here, and then everything else should be fine. So I'm gonna copy this over here and over to here. And so what we're doing now is we're looking at the RMSE value and we're trying to compare that to the average value. So let's go back, let's do average, and then we're gonna to go to compiled, and I'm gonna scroll up here just for our 30 days. That is the average value, meaning the average daily value. I'm just gonna duplicate that cell across so that way we can do the calculation. Then what we're gonna do is we're going to divide the RMSE by the average value to give us a percentage. Now this percentage tells us sort of the goodness, how accurate is this model, and then the lower the better. So ideally it'd be zero, of course that's not really practical, but 10% would be fantastic, 20% is pretty good. You can see here what we're working with is already 31%, so not ideal. Uh, give me one decimal point there, and then I will just copy this guy over here. Let me get rid of some of the decimal places here to kind of clean this up. So looking at this, it might not be entirely possible to understand why certain ones are better than the other. And if I was just trying to forecast on a daily basis, what I can see is that the Python model has the lowest RMSE value and the lowest percentage, the lowest variance compared to the average value. So this tells me that this is the best one to use out of these three models. The 30 day average is actually really good for what it is. None of these are fantastic, but again, we're only working with 30 days of data, which which isn't really enough to do long-term predictions. Uh, I think if you had years and years worth of data, you could probably get this down to quite a bit. And in fact, the Python model, my guess would still be the winner. But of course, not everyone knows how to use Python in Excel. So I created this free mini course for you to check out where you can go get your feet wet and really start working with Python in Excel to level up your data skills. That's it for this one, guys. Let me know what you think in the comments. And as always, don't forget, when you free the data, your mind will follow. I'll see you back here next time.